Hi, this is Chuck Benedict. I'm a mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon. In the second video uh, today, I wanted to talk with you about the architecture of the Vision Project. Uh, this is the second video in a series of videos where I describe a uh, way in which you can develop code test your vision project using a Microsoft Windows workstation free of any dependencies like uh, RoboRio. So I thought I would uh, go through this diagram that shows the architecture of the project before we dive in in future videos uh, where I explain the code and so forth. It's good to see the big picture, I think. So first of all, uh, we have here on the left a uh, USB camera plugged into presumably a Windows workstation. And on that workstation is an application that runs a program called GStreamer. And the purpose of this application is to uh, take the stream off of the camera and publish it on a TCP IP port, uh, TCP port 9999. It can be any port. That's the number that I picked. The purpose of that is to be able to make that stream available over a network to any other application that wants to consume it. And because TCP is a standard, it doesn't really matter then what kind of camera you've got plugged into your machine. Uh, we're just gonna know that that stream's available on that port. And this uh, multi-part MUX label down, that's down here, you need a way to be able to identify each one of the JPEGs as it is coming through the port. The uh, MJPEG stream is what this particular camera publishes, most cameras publish it because it's a fairly old standard and it's useful for us in robotics because we need to be examining frame by frame anyway and so there's no uh, interpolation required due to uh, compression. So next, the next application is the uh, MJPEG over HTTP streaming application. And the reason that this is important is because the uh, WPI lib classes that um, first publishes has a particular class in it that can consume MJPEG streams over HTTP. And in fact, that protocol is what all webcams publish anyway. So we need a way to convert the stream that's coming out of that port to an HTTP protocol. And that's what this application does. It's a Python 3 application. Uh, I found it Somebody else had written it, uh, and I'll credit them in the comments, and modified it slightly uh, to work correctly in this application. And out, out from that application, it publishes an HTTP port. It happens to be 1337. And you access the stream through slash MJPEG stream. So that what this, is, what this means is that you could take a web browser and you could point it to this URL and you would actually get the raw image out of the camera. Finally, the image processing application is where the meat of this work goes on. And uh, as you can see over this blue line here, it connects up to this port, this 1337 port, where it actually gets the live stream from. It uses the class HTTP client to connect to the stream. And the nice thing about this then is that regardless then of what camera you have or where that camera is plugged into, your image processor simply just, just connects up to HTTP client and is able to consume the stream and perform its work. The sample application that you'll see later publishes two HTTP ports, port 1885 and 1886. 1885 is the raw image that the image processor sees, which should be the same image that you get out over here. And 1886 is the image of the processed, is basically the result of the image pipeline. Uh, so you can see what the image processor sees. The final application indicated by this green line here is a network table simulator application. And the reason that this is important is because in my example, the image processing application writes to network tables. And if you're not familiar with what network tables is, think of it like an in-memory database that allows you to store key value pairs. And the reason that that's important is because your robot program uh, needs something to look at 
in order to make a determination as to when it needs to take an action. Now you could tightly couple that together with classes internally, but um, it's useful to decouple it so that your image processor simply writes its results to network tables and your robot program reads from those values. In this way, you can create a simulator to uh, consume the values from your image processor that's separate from having to have a RoboRio live and running. So, in, so because of that, then all four of these applications can be running locally on a Windows workstation and you can develop and test uh, in, a, in a standalone way, which is the objective of this. In the next video, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, source code of the project. Thanks for watching.